Hey there, welcome in. This is the WAST V3 TKL keyboard. And before I talk about this, I just wanna say that if you're new to this channel, my name's Harji, and if you enjoy tech videos, then consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. All right, so I reached out to WAST and asked if they could send me a unit to review. And sure enough, they were kind enough to do so. So thank you so much to the guys over there. I really appreciate it. And I will also say that um, being sponsored does not affect my review in any way. I do keep my content uh, unbiased um, with facts, despite what my personal preferences or opinions are. Okay, um, in this video, I will not just go over the specs and my user experience, but I will also talk about um, the building process when you do order one of these units. All right, so let's get started. Hey, if you wanna show your support for my channel, then check out displate.com where you can find a ton of posters made from metal uploaded by thousands of original artists all around the world. Designs ranging from anime, manga, video games, comic books, pop culture, music, portraits, landscape, architecture, wildlife, nature, and even motivational quotes to make your room colorful and help create the dream setup you've always wanted. Go use my affiliate link in the description down below to shop and learn more. The V3 keyboard was announced in January of this year and it started to become available to purchase the following month. Now as for pricing, it will run you anywhere between 140 to 300 US dollars depending on how much customizations you configure into your design. The new V3 generation is the same as the previous V2s with some changes. The connection type is now a USB-C instead of micro USB. The LEDs on the right side of the keyboard are now RGB indicators as they didn't have that before. The biggest upgrade I believe would be the onboard programmability for macros and remapping functions of your keys. So they are definitely staying up to date and modern with the features while providing users with the utility to personalize. Now let's talk about the buying process and then we'll jump into the specs. All right, so for design, the first thing you do is go to wasdkeyboards.com. Then you go up to the top right corner where it says shop. You can see that they have a bunch of different products including pre-made and pre-designed keyboards and accessories from uh, other artists that you can buy. But for this particular review, I'm going to talk about the steps I took to get my custom keyboard made here in this video if you want something more personalized like I did. So you're going to click on custom printed keyboards. And then from there, there's gonna be four phases you go through when designing your keyboard. Phase one is going to be picking your switch type, which will primarily be mostly all Cherry MX variations. And you're also going to pick your case color, which you'll only have two options, it's black or white. Now phase two is going to be choosing your colors for the alphanumeric and modifier keycaps and font as well. You'd essentially pick the target up here for keycaps or font, select your color, and then pick which key group you want that particular color to apply to. Then phase three is going to be picking your legends where you'd be able to customize the style of your font. You can go from small, medium, or large, centered, classic symbols, media buttons, and even the style of your Windows key. And phase four would be whether you want them to add sound dampeners, O-rings to each of your keycaps. Your only two options would be the red O-rings with 0.2 millimeter travel distance reduction or the blue o-rings that give you 0.4 millimeter travel distance reduction and then once you're finished you would just add the final design to your cart and get ready for checkout once they have your order received they would then pull out all the colored keycaps and print them to your specifications using a uv printer assemble the entire keyboard together from scratch and then they'll even lubricate all mating surfaces using a special silicone PTFE grease to make sure that the parts don't rattle or become abrasive within itself and the final product is solid and smooth as possible for use before they ship it out to you. Okay, now let's talk about the actual keyboard. Out of the box, you get the keyboard itself, a USB-C rubber cable, a keycap remover, instructions manual and their company sticker, the V3 TKL is made out of a hard ABS plastic for the frame and it's really solid. The keycaps are made out of UV coated ABS, which just means that it's the process of how they print the coloring and ink using the UV printers. Now, dimensions are 363 
by 142 by 30 millimeters in length, width, and height respectively. It weighs around 1.1 kilograms or 2.4 pounds. You do get a USB-C connection on the keyboard itself and it is compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux. On the bottom side, there's a total of eight rubber pads to keep your keyboard from sliding around. Six flat pads and two rubber coated feet on the kickout stands if you like the incline typing experience. If you do use the stands, it brings the total height of the keyboard from 30 millimeters to 50 millimeters. I also want to mention that you also get five different routing options for your USB cable, which I thought is really clever. Not a design you see in many pre-made mainstream keyboards. This gives you the choice to direct your cables to however you want on your desk for a cleaner and less cluttered setup. The only complaint I have about these routing channels is that they are kind of tight only because they have these staggered cutout points to hold the cable in place. And the issue is that it's too tight to the point where you can almost not put it in. And it damages and scratches the cable as evident here on the default rubber cable that comes in the box. So I opted not to use these routing channels, especially with my really expensive aviator coiled cable here. Now this custom aviator USB cable is made with midnight blue paracord material and double sleeve with a gray carbon colored fiber mesh. I designed the V3 keyboard layout and my custom USB cable with colors that match my channel theme. I got these from Dream Cables, which I will link down in the description below if you are interested. Now in my particular customization here, I asked for the Cherry MX Silent Reds um, without the dampeners. And I've been using the regular red switches for a very long time and that's what I'm most comfortable with. It is one, the one that I like the most out of all the Cherry switches. So these are definitely awesome and a step up or a step down. Uh, step down in terms of noise level, but step up in terms of my workflow improvements, right? On another note though, um, once you have your keyboard ordered and assembled, the switches are unfortunately not hot swappable for those of you who may have plans to switch your switches. It appears that they use the CoStar stabilizers in the longer keycaps on my V3, as you can see here with the metal bars instead of the cherry stabilizers, which essentially would be adding balancing stems on both sides of a keycap instead. It's really well put together and balanced across the board. Now, here's a sound test of my V3. The other neat thing about the WAS keyboards is that you don't need a software to program macros or remap functions. Everything is operated and controlled through the dip switch at the bottom of the keyboard. There are six different switches that you can flip on and off to access the four different layers, as they call it, for different profiles, which will save your macros and remaps. I'm not going to go over every single function and combination because that would make this video way too long. Plus, they do give you an instructions manual that will show you how to do all of that with everything listed out. Okay, here are my thoughts on the user experience. So this keyboard did actually take me a while to get used to because of the base height. Um, it's a bit taller than what I'm used to. And it's also uh, the first time I've typed on a lubricated uh, keyboard with that special silicone gel, uh, which creates this smooth typing experience that I'm also not really accustomed to. It does feel weird for me, but it's not a bad thing. The lube is good for the longevity of the keyboard. Now, I'm very much a low profile keyboard type of guy. Prior to receiving this keyboard, the Corsair K65 is what I've been using and that to me is what I'm aiming for in terms of the keyboard height. Actually, Corsair's low profile K70s, which is even lower than their regular K keyboards, is the ideal perfect height for me. I did a review on that keyboard up here if you are interested in the specs, but those uh, actually use the low profile Cherry MX switches, which I like, but they do need some refining. The story for another time. So my solution was using a wrist support, which did make the V3 keyboard much better in terms of adjusting to the height, but I still need to get used to the lubricated typing experience. 
Now, the last thing I wish I could get are dedicated media controls, uh, especially a volume knob or a wheel or something, because I use it all the time. So using the function key just feels like an extra step for something that I use very, very often. All right, personal preference and I guess wishful thinking. I think if the WASP V3 TKL keyboard had a volume wheel or a volume knob or dedicated media keys, it would be the end all keyboard for me. Um, anyways, aside from that, I think everything else about the keyboard is very solid. It's well made, uh, really well put together. And I know there's a lot of um, minimalist uh, setup enthusiasts out there. And this is pretty much what the brand is catered towards. I highly recommend WAS keyboards. And let me know down in the comments below what you think about the V3 that I went over in this review. Um, thumbs up for the video if you enjoyed it. And I really appreciate your time uh, in watching my content. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.